In this video, objects are fallen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi everyone, this is Omar Balfaki and welcome to my filmmaking and game development channel. This video is kind of a request. I recently got an email from one of the users of my Obi Object Placer tool and he was asking about the trailer that I created for this tool for version 2 when I released it a few years back. It was more of a cinematic trailer to hint or suggest the upcoming features and the current features. So he was interested in the fallen objects like the rocks here and the pillars. So this video will be focusing just on that, the different ways you can use it and how you can utilize my OB tools to make that even much, much easier. So first thing first, we have our timeline here. It's empty and make sure it's locked. So whenever we click something else, it doesn't go away. And now let's start placing the rock. I'm just going to drag this over. It's somewhere. So I'm just going to place it wherever I want. Okay, let's say here. So here's what we can do. We simply drag it to the animation track, hit record, go to around two seconds and add key to the position and to the rotation. And then go to the first frame and just drag it anywhere far away. Hit play and it's working just fine. So I'm going to select the timeline, wrap mode, make it hold. So it stops at the last frame. But it doesn't look like it's falling, it's more of shifting to position because currently it's on ease in, ease out. It starts slow, then a little bit fast, and then slows down again. Let's double click the animation track. So I'm going to select both of these keyframes, both tangents, and then linear. So now it's working just fine. Even if I decided to make it shorter. Yeah, more like it. I'm just going to make it a little bit longer so we can see and understand how it works. So I'm going to stop recording the animation. And now let's say I want to move it somewhere else. Typically, the first thing you would have in mind is actually modifying these keyframes, right? Because if you move it around, it's not going to be affected. You have these keyframes. So what we can do is actually affecting the animation clip and its track offset. To do that, let's just convert it into a clip track. Now we can modify it easily like this. Make it faster by holding shift and dragging it back. But now we're interested in actually moving it. So how you can do that is just go to the last frame so you can frame it better. And then you can adjust the position and rotation track offsets here. Or you can just select the move tool here and move it around. And it just works fine. But it's just going to be hard if you want to place it on other surfaces. Like for instance, here, you have to move it, rotate it to position it perfectly. So what we can do is I'm going to go back to the last frame again. So now to see the magic again, make sure that we're selecting the clip and then click place here. And I can just place it anywhere I want. And it falls just right in. Now, let's say I want to duplicate that. Okay, so I'm just going to select the rock and I'm going to use original prefab when duplicating and repetitive duplication. So let's start duplicating and drag up to make it big and then smaller, bigger, and so on. So let's say we have these now. If I want to animate them, of course, nothing would happen because we only have one animated component, which is attached to the first one. To add to the other ones, I'm just going to select all of them and drag them here as an animation track. And now I'm just going to reuse the same recorded animation. Select it, and then Control-C, and keep on pacing it 
everywhere. But now as you can see, they're all starting from the same position. So I'm going to place them again. So I'm going to go to the last frame and start selecting them one by one again. Simply place. Because before we duplicated the game object, but not the animation or the animation track clip. Now we're selecting the clips and positioning them one by one with a single click. So now if I hit play, they're all working just fine. What we can do now is actually we will start moving them a little bit forward. So they fall down one after the other. So let's hit play and see them falling in front of us one by one. That is really cool. And now let's see the other cool feature. Let's say you want to move 50 or 70 objects at the same time. So I'm just going to remove these. We are off to a fresh start now. So I'm going to use this time the other tool, Random Placer. And let's see, it's here. And I want to place rocks. So if I hit spawn, we have them all here. We have all of them just right here. Okay, so here is the other trick. What we can do is simply drag that into the animation track and then create an animation and start recording the animation. And I'm going to select all of these objects and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to one or two second spot and then right click add to the rotation and position and go back here just drag them all up so if i hit play now nothing will happen only one of the objects will be animated it's weird right but let's see why so if i double click the animation to check it out it says a warning here that duplicate game object name if we check the hierarchy here we will see that all of these objects they have the exact same name and the animation here is trying to modify an object with that exact name but all of them they have the same thing so it will just move the first one in order to fix that we need to have unique names for each one of these that's why i just released a new update with this little feature but very helpful here you have a new toggle name with index and then zero zero basically what it does is that it will add the grid x and y index next to the name i'll show you now so i'm just going to delete everything again and enable the name with index and hit spawn and now look everything is the same except for their names we have these additional numbers next to each one of them so if we try to do the same thing again add an animation track Inside recording, I'm going to select all of them and go to the two seconds mark. Add key to the position and rotation, go to the first frame, drag them up and hit play. We will see them all falling just perfectly fine. And again, we're going to do the same thing to make them linear. So it feels more of a falling rather than slowly going to a place. Okay, cool. If we just make it faster. Yeah, they're falling. Okay, to add some variety to it, I'm just going to go to the first frame, select all of them, or I can just select the last spawn prefabs from here and go to search and replace. And then I'm going to go to randomize and we will use random position relatively in a global or world space. I'm just going to have a range from negative 2 to 50. Hit randomize and look at the magic. So if I hit play, they will have different speeds. That's cool. Another thing to add variety to the animation, we can select the last keyframe of a couple of them and just move them back and select other keyframes and just offset them a little. So now we have them falling in different speeds and different timings. And one last thing. Let's say you want to replace all of these with another object. You've done the animation, you've done the hard work, and now you decided that you want a different kind of rock or maybe you want to drop trees or whatever. So in order to do that, the tools got you covered. Don't worry. So with search and replace, you can replace all of them. So I'm going to select all of these again 
and then go to replace and use a different kind of rock and hit replace. Well, it says it's all missing because if we check it again, it has a totally different name, the new prefab's name. But don't worry about that. I've also released a new feature for this tool, which is because at the moment we have rotation source and scale source, whether you want to use the transform of the old object or the new prefab. I've added the same thing, but for the name. So now you can keep the current values, which is the current name of each object. If I hit replace, you'll see that all of these objects have changed to the new rock. However, their name still remained the same. So now I'm just going to refresh it a little bit. And now if we hit play, we will see that it's working perfectly fine. That's basically it. So if you're interested in more of the filmmaking side of Unity, you can check out my Unity Filmmaking 101 course. And as of this moment, it still has Search and Replace and Object Placer as free tools included with the course. And we're going to talk about almost everything about filmmaking with Unity to editing in Adobe Premiere and talking about different topics. But if you're just interested in the tools, I have the three of them as a bundle on the Asset Store as well as on my own store. So you can check it out and let me know if you have any more questions. And I hope this video has answered the question of the tool user. This is Omar Balfiki. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.